was a courageous woman because she said, she made a decision that they want me to come before these drunken men. And she made a decision that I'm going to keep a standard. Uh, I, I, I like myself, I know who I am, and because I'm comfortable in who I am, I'm not going to let them just parade me before a bunch of drunken men. Now, there was a price to pay, and I'm sure she calculated that price before it happened. But in this day and time, uh, we need courageous women that will uh, uh, not be in the category of uh, the women, 14% of African-American females have abortions because they put themselves in situations uh, and then make that decision. Uh, it, it could be unintended pregnancies, relationships, contraceptive, income, all those things are a factor. But we need women that will honor the principle of having kids and not killing our kids. Also, we need women that she was in a situation where she was to be chosen for marriage. Now, in this day, a lot of people get married, but they don't stay married. We, uh, divorce rate is high in the church, uh, just like it is uh, out there in the community. We need women who will take care of their health. Uh, the African American women uh, make up a greater percentage of women who have breast cancer. Uh, we need courageous women to, to take a lead and say, I'm going to care enough about myself to get my physical uh, exams like I'm supposed to. The black women make up a good percentage of people who are HIV positive. And a lot of times we think about this as people that are in the world, but there are people in the church that are dying of AIDS. There are people in the church that are experiencing domestic violence. Uh, that black women have a greater percentage of domestic violence cases on uh, uh, fatal crimes, fatal where in their, their in their partner, uh, where their partner is the one that that takes them out yeah. to say. So to be courageous, one of the things I, I thought about this was prayer. Prayer is not a mysterious practice reserved only for clergy or, in, or devout religious people, but it's a thing of communicating. Prayer is the only way that we can first understand the will of God, secondly accept his will, and thirdly submit to his will. If prayer is the only thing capable of empowering Jesus to fully obey the will of God, then we surely must watch and pray. Our generation will love to eat. Not too many people want to fast. Not too many want to pray. Uh, you can have a prayer, prayer meeting and and, and not too many will come. But the, the thing in this scripture, it said that she asked them to go on a prayer and fast. As courageous women, we have to see the need to pray and fast. We want our kids saved, but sometimes we don't want to fast and pray and ask for deliverance. We want healing, but sometimes we don't want to fast and pray. A lot of times we have our agenda up, out there, but we're not courageous enough to put ourselves up and, and say that I will fast, I will pray. One thing about this, she had a life uh, that, 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 that it was evident that she had learned something from her, from her cousin, uh, so that when she got in this situation, the courageousness to realize, I, I know that if I go before the king, I could be killed. But I serve a God, an awesome God, that can give me courage in the, in the midst of my trials, in the midst of my situation. When I am going through, and everybody is going through, every family is going through, everybody has encountered something that is a trial and a tribulation. It may be up in your house, it may be up on your job, it may be in your, in your pocketbook, but we are all encountering something 
that will try our faith in God. But it takes a courageous woman to say that no matter what the price is, and if that price includes my life, I'm willing to give it for the Lord. In this day and time, we need to be courageous women that we will stand for holiness. When the world is turning uh, against holiness and they're considering right, right, wrong, and wrong, right, it takes a mind to say, for God, I'm going to live, and for God, I'm going to die, and then to make a decision, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I don't care what comes from day to day. I don't care if I have the approval of somebody. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I dare you to be a courageous woman. It won't fail me. I can trust the fortress. It won't 
won't sell me. I can trust the deliverer. He won't sell me. I can trust my God because he is a God that selleth not. I can trust in his strength and it will sell me not. She is faithful in studying the word of God, allowing the word to examine and correct her. She utilizes the application of the word. She applies the word daily to her life to speak forth the destiny that God has set before her. She speaks words back to him and tells him, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. As she speaks to the Lord, she tells him that her faith is every word that he speaks. And she realizes that the word is the only thing that will last. She can visibly see in the spirit how great God is faithful in showing forth unto her. She loves God. She positioned herself to do in the likeness of God. She puts forth the first commandment to love thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength and to love thy neighbor as thyself. She extends love of God to others in her witness to bring them to Christ. Her work unto the Lord is relentless, for she knows that the hour is near and the Savior is yet soon coming. She has prepared herself well accordingly to the word of God in knowing that God has yet and is fulfilling a purpose in and to her life. She has learned to be obedient and know that obedience is better than sacrifice. Through her process, she remains obedient not only, only unto God, but to those that are, that are in, in authority over her. Her pastor, her bishop, her state mother, her district missionary. She is blessed in her obedience and her collaboration with the leadership and bringing forth the gospel to the lost. She is a mainstay in her home church unto the work of the Lord. Her yea is yes to the Lord, yes to his will, and yes to his way. She is defined by her attitude and her approach in speaking the goodness and will holler the hope of the glory to all that who will listen. She is a woman of prayer and of great faith. She is strong. She is solid in her faith and understanding of the word of God. That he is the author and the finisher of her faith. That she enters into his gates with thanksgiving and, and, and praise. She inquires of the Lord in all her decision making. She sacrifices so others can be blessed. She seeks God's revelation for every encounter that comes into her life. She trusts in the Lord always. She rejoices in knowing that he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. She's on bending knees and request is one. She is aware of the newness of his daily mercy. Great is her faithfulness unto God. She trusts in the Lord with all her heart, and she lives not on her own understanding. And in all her ways she acknowledges him, and he directs her path. And it is this that she is strong. Speaking to 
women at conferences and church meetings about the issues that women face on a day-to-day -day basis. She's devoted life to the Reverend Curtis R. Hostis and is the mother of a blended family of five. Veronica serves as the first lady of the New Life Christian Ministry Church Incorporation of Oxnard, California, for more than 13 years. She was personally responsible for the youth ministry. Her ministry provided leadership and mentoring to hundreds of children and young adults, leading many of them to salvation and new lives in Jesus Christ. Not your traditional first lady. Veronica Hoskins is a leader in her own right. During the Christmas holiday season, she coordinated the efforts of the church with the United States Marine Corps Toys for Tops campaign to distribute more than 400 toys a year for 13 consecutive years to some of our most undeserved and needed families in the Oxnard. Making the season brighter for so many families. This ministry was a blessing to so many and was a vital part of the church's community outreach mission. Veronica is a prolific businesswoman, having a background serving as a senior bank officer with the Bank of America. I just want to stop here and say it was good to go to the bank and see a black person in the bank. And I would go to that bank so I could see her. You know, because we don't have any, you know, and so we're trying to train our children. Let's get an education and move up. For over 20 years, she was there. Her area of specialization is as a personal financer and mortgage loan originator. One of her passions is that every person realizes the American dream of home ownership. Presently, Veronica is the uh, business owner of Variety Signing Services and is a consultant with High Tech Lending and Cooperation. At this time, this is Veronica Hoskins. And they will be 
reason. Now look at your neighbor and ask your neighbor, have you been through something? Now if your neighbor is here, today we're going to learn how to talk to ourselves. I'm going to say that again. Today, if we weren't among one another, we're going to learn how to talk to ourselves. I can easily have taken another direction in life. But let me share with you. Don't let your circumstances determine your direction. I had to ask myself the question, did I follow God's directions? Why did all this happen to me? Did I do something wrong? Was I out of fellowship with God? It was the word of God that brought me through. How did I do it? I'm glad you asked. I surrounded myself with the word of God. I laid out before the Lord in my bedroom, crying out to God. I continue to study God's word. And sometimes people think because you're married to a minister that you don't have those problems. But I come to tell you, everybody has a problem. You also must recognize that God has a plan and a purpose for all of us. I remember one of my sisters in Christ came to visit me at the bank. And when she came in the bank, I had seen her for a while. She's married, her husband's a pastor as well. Beautiful woman of God. Sister Arlene Carter, she won't mind me saying. She came in and she was going through what I was going through, but we didn't say anything to one another. And she said, let's go to lunch. So we went out to lunch. And she had said to me, well, sister, why don't you come and fellowship with me? I go to a Bible study group. Uh -huh. And I said, well, you know, I I'll think about it. You know, to myself, say to myself, I don't, you know, I'm already in the ministry. I'm at church. I'm doing the work of the Lord. What more do I need? All right. And so she said, come on. She didn't want to bug me. She didn't want to push. She didn't want to cry. So she went ahead and asked me to come. So it took me probably six months to a year to humble myself to go to this Bible study. It's called Stone Crawl Ministries. It's a women's ministry. Been around since the 1940s. We get caught up in the color of our skin. We get caught up in the same age we are. I went to the first Bible study. I walked in, little Hispanic ladies, little old white ladies. And I just said to myself, and 
how we respond to difficult situations and that we call ourselves Christians. Somebody was watching me how I responded because I heard about it. Isaiah 50 and 7. And I 
use the New Living Translation because I can't understand the King James Version that we have to submit, so I can understand this one better. Okay. Because the sovereign, the sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a stone, determined to do His will, and I know that I will not be put to shame. This passage shows us how we should stay focused on His Word. And when we follow what the Lord has said, we will be able to conquer all things that may be obstacles in our lives, and we will have no issues. According to the Webster's Dictionary, determined means decided, settled, or resolved. Some other possible words instead of using determined could be inflexible, unfaltering, unwavering, focused, things like that. As women of God, we must be able to stand strong in our decisions and be able to look towards God when we need confirmation or affirmation on decisions that will affect our lives. We must not falter when we are on our path to victory and not allow others to deter us from what God has called us to do. Determination is the tool we use to feed our faith and to starve our, darks, our doubts to death. We struggle with many issues of the flesh and mind, and as women striving to be the best that we can be, we must make sure we stay determined to stick to the path that will lead us to victory. So many times we get caught up with the wrong people and our focus changes. Sometimes we have people in our lives that at a time were there for a purpose. However, as you grow in your faith and are more determined to make it, they are sitting there wondering what they can do to steal your joy and keep you from growing. I'm pretty sure you all know the types of people that I am talking about. The ones that are so quick to congratulate you on a promotion, it, whether it be at work or in the church. But yet, as soon as your back is turned, they are talking about you to everyone that will listen and are trying to cut you down because you achieved something. I know this feeling firsthand. In school, people used to always say, wow, you're smart, or that's crazy, you can manage school and sports at the same time. But yet, behind my back, I was a geek. The nerd, the bookworm, wasn't invited anywhere. At first, I was bothered by that. But when I learned that they were just jealous of my determination and drive for success, who cared that when they were busy partying and drinking and having relationships and getting by in their lives and getting by in class, I was staying diligent in my studies and not knowing that my determination for success was preparing me for where God was going to take me and how he was going to use my skills yeah. and the people that I met to propel me to new heights. Yeah. We as women all have gone through different walks of life, coming from different backgrounds and generations. However, our focus and determination should always be on the same thing, and that is getting closer to God. Yeah. My pastor stated that when you never see that when you never see the hand of God, I'm sorry, you will never see the hand of God when you are focused on the hand of man. And if you are focused on man, you will not reach your true potential. We tend to lose sight of that focus and tend to go back to God, speaking about others in the church. We become more concerned about what people are wearing instead of focusing on how the Holy Spirit.